Hi everyone and welcome to this month's how-to where I'm going to try and give you some more information on colour theory and show you how to distinguish whether a colour is warm or cool. That's a description that we use all the time when we talk about colour and sometimes it's really obvious which colour is the warm and which one is the cool but when you're dealing with more subtle shades and tones that can be a little bit more tricky. So I hope that you enjoy this short video. If you do, please do subscribe here on my YouTube channel and check out lots of my other informational videos. Also check me out over on Patreon where you'll find my full length real time tutorials and lots more. So as well as doing some color comparisons, I also want to show you how and where I make those decisions in my work. So when does it become useful for me to think if something is warm or cool? But the first example, which is the most obvious way to compare two colors, if we literally take two from opposite ends of the spectrum, it's quite clear that this one's going to be the warm one and this one's going to be the cool one. So when we're talking about two colours that are very different, it's very easy to put one over here and one over here. And we are sort of thinking about all of these colours in relation to the colour spectrum. So thinking of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, those, those rainbow colours really, the spectrum colours. And I try to keep that roughly in mind when I'm making these decisions about whether a colour is warm or cool. Once again, let's take those two really obvious ones, a red, orange and a blue, clearly warm and cool. So what if I swap out the orange for this lovely vibrant yellow? I think we could still say that this is the cool one and that this is warmer. But what if we swap it in for a slightly warmer yellow? So now when we start to compare colors that are more similar, so two yellows, for example, instead of two colors from opposite ends of the spectrum, now we can start to see more of the subtleties of where the cool and the warm lies. So in actual fact, I would put this one on the warm side because it's got more orange in it and this one when it's sat next to this one actually looks more like a very lime green or lemon yellow, so much cooler. Yet a moment ago this one was the warm one, so how did that change? And that's really because colour is relative, so how warm or cold a colour will look can sometimes really depend on the colour that it's sitting next to. So let's look at a few more examples of that. Let's take a green for example. So the rule seems to be that the colour with more yellow in it, heading more towards the warm end of the scale, will look warmer. And the cooler one tends to have more blue mixed in. And we can also look at lighter tints of this as well. So here we're, we're not really talking about how dark or light a colour is, but we're looking at the hue of the colour. Let's have a look next then at some purples or blue violets. So two colours that are very similar in value, but this one being the warmer one, more red in this one, and more blue in this one. So you can compare colours that are very similar and still be able to describe which one is warmer or cooler. So we've figured out that colour is relative and that it can change its appearance depending on the other colours sitting around it. So that sounds a bit confusing. So I want to show you an example where I can use that decision making and analysis of colour to benefit my work and no more, more so than in a white subject matter or a white dog like this one. So for example, with some of the darker colours in the shadow areas of the coat, say I'm looking for a grey tone. So we can take 
quite a, a middle ground grey tone. It's neither very warm or very cool. It's quite monochrome. So if we're looking for something of this colour value, but I'd like it to be either warmer or cooler, then I can look for colours like these, which are of a similar value, but I'm going to be able to create a warmer effect, like in around here and under here or a cooler effect where I want it like in under here in the darker shadows. So instead of just opting for one grey, instead I can find a full spectrum of colour that will also describe it tonally like this grey would have. And then if you take that into the slightly darker tones it works too. You can go with a warmer tone like this or a cooler darker tone like this. And so the spectrum splits in either way. So I'm always deciding within the shadows whether it's warm or cool that I need. And it's never more confusing than within a white dog because it's not always the case that the colors within the shadow areas will all be cool or cold colors. Quite often a white dog like this is reflecting all of the warm surroundings possibly. So there will be lots of warm colours bouncing off of this white coat. Don't forget that white in particular reflects everything around it. And let's have a quick look then at the tints, at the lighter shades that I would have used on the brightest parts of the dog, but also on some of my highlight colours within the shadows. So again, you've always got a, a warm and a cooler version of every tint and then to go one step lighter, some of my brightest highlights and again some of my brightest highlights within the shadow areas. So there's always a use to be able to determine whether a colour is warm or cool and you're always trying to compare that with the other colours that you're using. So in this piece in particular, to try and create some very subtle light and shade because we're talking about a lot of white fur and the photo reference for this one wasn't super detailed so I didn't have a lot to go on. So to try and create some of the shadow tones on this side of the dog especially, I brought in lots of the lighter lilac colours. So some of these and also some of my lighter BV1. And these create a more cool effect on this side of the face and also over here just certain pockets are really being hit by the light where you get that pure white fur. The rest really has a lot of colour in it. But if I use just all of those blues and light lilacs the dog's going to look very cold and that's not how it looked in the photograph. So I've also made use of lots of warmer highlights over here mixed in as well. So some of these, not the lighter ones, saving that for the sunlit areas, but lots of this warmer tint just mixed in along with those cool colours. So you can see that it's not always about just putting the cold colours in the shadows. Sometimes you've got to combine the two. So this is all stuff that takes a little bit of time and practice, but you really can train your eye to see more colour. I know this for a fact because at the beginning in my work I just wasn't seeing beyond the monochrome very much and the more I have learned to really look and analyse what I'm seeing I know now that I can see a much broader spectrum of colour than I could before. And something that I advise everyone to do, whether you've got a small pastel collection or a huge pastel collection which is going to take you a lot longer but I advise everyone to take their pastels and play with them and put them in colour order. So first of all take them and put them from light through to dark. It's an interesting challenge to do sometimes. Then take them and put them from warm through to cool. It's surprising that it really helps you analyse what colours you have available in your palette and how they relate to each other. I actually did this experiment with my Unison Animal set, which you can see in the video, which I'll add a link to at the end of the video. So I hope that you enjoyed this. 
and that you found some useful information to help you apply colour theory more to your work. If you did enjoy this then please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment below, tell me what sorts of things you'd like me to make more videos about. Also consider checking out my Patreon channel where you'll find my full catalogue of pastel tutorials. Thanks very much for watching and until next time, happy pastling.